all here as present this evening. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you again. <coughs> Is everybody able to follow my instructions? No reading about, tweeting, texting, or blogging. Yes? Yes. All right. All right, members of the jury, you have found the defendant guilty of four counts of murder in the first degree. The punishment for this crime is either life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. The attorneys will now have an opportunity, if they wish, to make an opening statement. The opening statement gives the attorneys a chance to tell you what evidence they believe will be presented during the penalty phase of this trial. What the lawyers say again during opening statement is not evidence, and you are not to consider it as such. After the attorneys have had an opportunity to present their opening statements, the state and the defense may present evidence relative to the nature of the crime and the defendant's character, background, or life. You are instructed that this evidence is presented in order for you to determine, as you will be instructed at the end, whether each aggravating factor is proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Number two, whether one or more aggravating factors exist beyond a reasonable doubt. Number three, whether the aggravating factors found to exist beyond a reasonable doubt are sufficient to justify the imposition of the death penalty. Number four, whether mitigating circumstances are proved by a greater weight of the evidence. Number five, whether the aggravating factors outweigh the mitigating circumstances. And number six, whether the defendant should be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole or death. At the conclusion of the evidence and after arguments of counsel, you will be instructed on the law that will guide you during your deliberations. An aggravating factor is a standard to guide the jury in making the choice between life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. It is a statutorily enumerated circumstance that increases the gravity of a crime or the harm to a victim. You must unanimously agree that each aggravating factor was proved beyond a reasonable doubt before it may be considered by you in arriving at your final verdict. In order to consider the death penalty as a possible penalty, you must unanimously determine that at least one aggravating factor has been proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The state has the burden to prove each aggravating factor beyond a reasonable doubt. A reasonable doubt is not a mere possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt. Such a doubt must not influence you to disregard an aggravating factor if you have an abiding conviction that it exists. <coughs> On the other hand, if after carefully considering, comparing, and weighing all the evidence, you do not have an abiding conviction that the aggravating factor exists, or if having a conviction is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the aggravating factor has not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, and you must not consider it in providing your verdict on the appropriate sentence to the court. A reasonable doubt as to the existence of an aggravating factor may arise from the evidence, conflict in the evidence, or lack of evidence. If you have a reasonable doubt as to the existence of an aggravating factor, you must find that it does not exist. However, if you have no reasonable doubt, you should find that the aggravating factor does exist. Before moving on to the mitigating circumstances, you must determine that the aggravating factors are sufficient to impose a sentence of death. If you do not unanimously agree that the aggravating factors are sufficient to impose death, do not move on to, the consi to consider the mitigating circumstances. If you find that the aggravating factors are sufficient to justify the imposition of the death penalty, it will then be your duty to determine whether the aggravating factors that you unanimously find to have been proved beyond a reasonable doubt 
outweigh the mitigating circumstances <coughs> that you find exist. Unlike aggravating factors, you do not need you do not need to unanimously agree that a mitigating circumstance exists. A mitigating circumstance is not limited to the facts surrounding the crime. It can be anything in the life of the defendant which might indicate that the death penalty is not, an, is not appropriate for the defendant. In other words, a mitigating circumstance may include any aspect of the defendant's character, background, or life, or any circumstance of the offense that reasonably may indicate that the death penalty is not an appropriate sentence in this case. A mitigating circumstance need not be proved beyond a reasonable doubt by the defense. A mitigating circumstance need only be proved by the greater weight of the evidence, which means the evidence that more likely than not tends to prove the existence of a mitigating circumstance. If you determine by the greater weight of the evidence that a mitigating circumstance exists, you may consider it established and give that evidence such weight as you determine it should receive in reaching your conclusion as to the sentence to be imposed. 